Hey everybody, my name is Paul Eston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash boygreen25. Make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe. And boy, mamacita, do we have a phenomenal guest. Perhaps one of the greatest guests to ever grace these airwaves. And visuals, of course, let's bring him in. One And I got to be honest, this is one of my favorite additions for the New York Jets this year because the tight end position has been a wasteland for the New York Jets for the last decade. We bring this man in. It's the one and only Tyler Conklin, New York Jets tight end. Tyler, what's popping, baby? Hey, what's up? What's up? I appreciate you having me today. Well, Tyler, uh, first off, the reason why we're bringing you on here is to talk about your amazing camp. So let's dive right into that. And for people that are curious about this thing, it is the 586 Showcase. It's going to be on June 18th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. for high school athletes. And I want to start there, uh, Tyler. How long have you been running this camp? It uh, it seems really interesting. This will be the third annual year. Uh, COVID kind of didn't allow us to do it one year. Um and now we kind of get back to be able to do it how we originally wanted to do it. Some things had to kind of, you know, with COVID and, and whatnot, we had to, you know, abide by a lot of different guidelines and, and other things. But, uh, you know, something that's really special to, you know, me and one of my best friends, Sean Kosky, who helped me run everything because, uh, you know, we just uh, – it all stems from my story of just feeling like we were kind of undervalued in Macomb County, where I'm from, uh, you know, as recruits and, and football players. And uh, he felt the same way. And, and during COVID, we got together during quarantine. And we were like, hey, we really want to do something. Uh, so we did a training. We did some training on top of that. But, uh, you know, just trying to do anything we can for the Macomb County and help, you know, the athletes get the recognition we think they deserve uh, because we felt like we didn't get when we were in high school. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how it all stemmed and how it all started. Here's the website for folks. It'll also be available in the description down below, but it's eventcreate.com backslash the 586 uh, showcase. Again, that will also be uh, below uh, in the description. You know, everyone runs a football camp, Tyler, in the NFL. It seemingly seems that way, and they have their own cause. But really, what, what inspired you to actually go and do this? I hear that you were talking about, again, not having the proper spotlight for yourself, and now it provides it. For these guys, who are some of the people that are going to be in attendance? What I saw is it's going to be uh, high school athletes. That's kind of who you're targeting to try to perhaps give them a bigger platform as uh, they try to kind of progress through the next level. Yeah, so for me, you know, I was I was mainly a basketball player in high school. And, uh, you know, I signed early signing period, um, you know, before I even played my senior year of basketball. Um, you know, I went to a D2 school called Northwood and uh, – you know, I played my senior year of football and I got recruited for it. And I just didn't want to throw everything away I did for, for basketball for one year of football. Um, you know, we were going into my senior year, we were like 0-27 in football. I didn't have a very good wow. program. Uh, we had a good basketball program. And uh, we had a new coach my senior year. and We played well, 8-3, and three, won and hosted our first ever playoff game. And I started getting some recognition for football. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just can't throw away everything I've done for basketball for that. And uh, one of my best friends, my quarterback, Sean Kosky, uh, you know, he was in the – you know, he was uh, – you know, had a hell of a senior year, threw for like 41 touchdowns. You know, just he had, should have had an opportunity to go play for somewhere. He was in the, the talks for Mr. Football in Michigan. And, uh, wow. you know, I, I went on and I, I played basketball at Northwood for a semester and ended up leaving and, and transferring and walking on at Central Michigan University. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. We, we made it here today and got drafted in the fifth round and, and signed with the New York Jets. And, you know, we look back and we're like, wow, like we there's no way that, you know, I should have had to walk on or – um, you know, not really had any offers besides a D2 basketball school. And there's no way he shouldn't have had any more offers than, uh, you know, some Division three schools. And I think he had one D2 offer. And, uh, you know, we just kind of felt underappreciated in our area. Most of the, you know, the kids in, in Detroit and PSL or in Oakland County. Um, it's probably foreign to a lot of people in New Jersey, but just different, sure, you know, large right. counties around us that, you know, get a lot of, uh, you know, their athletes get a lot of, press and, and know a lot more love than we feel like our athletes do and uh, so like you said everybody does a football camp uh you know everybody runs a youth camp and gets kids in and whatnot we want to take a different approach to it so we uh you know we, we ended up going invite only we reached out to all all the high schools in macomb county which is about 40 high schools mm -hmm. and uh you know we had them recommend their 10 uh, best football players or 10 football players they thought you know had the best chance of playing at the next level and, uh, you know, they sent us sent us those lists and we went through and, uh, you know, looked at the players and, and sent out invites. And then, uh, you know, they, they all showed up and, and we put them through. We had uh, the camp basically is laid out with 
know, the beginning of it was like some different stations and stuff. We tried to make it a little difficult because I was a walk on, so you know, I had a yeah, little yeah, to yeah. It. But uh, and then after that, they went to position drills. They did one on ones, and we broke them up and did seven on seven. You know, we had a bunch of college coaches in attendance, and uh, you know, the first year we thought went really well for you know putting on a football camp that me and my buddy did all by ourselves and, and doing it in a different aspect of just instead of just getting a bunch of you know kids together and, and running them through some stuff and uh that's kind of how it all how it all began and then you know when that started we kind of had a vision of what we kind of wanted to grow it into and you know this year is kind of going to be the first step of growing it into that vision with it being us having three different camps and it becoming more of a, a weekend event because at the end of the day we want this to be a um you know a weekend of football for you know all the football enthusiasts in, in macomb county you know we're gonna have a youth camp on friday night under the lights because you know growing up and friday nights you got all the kids playing on the side of the while we're playing all the kids are over there playing and uh you know so they get to be under the lights at, at a young age and have some fun with it and uh you know have the parents come out and you know we want to keep growing and having food trucks and doing all these different things where it's just a fun event and saturday we're gonna uh, have seventh to tenth graders come together from like two to four, thir- two to four, mm-hmm. and uh, they'll do about this. They'll do kind of the same. It'd be the same thing at the eleventh and twelfth graders would do. It'd kind of be like an intro into, um, you know, preparing them for for camps and how and competing and you know getting an early look at some of the younger kids that are talented in our area. And then six to eight thirty, we'll we'll get uh, the big boys out there. The 11th and 12th graders and oh, yeah. we'll, get the college co- we'll get the college coaches out there and uh you know have some fun and, well you know, tyler this is of... an amazing platform i gotta tell you it's really cool and the thing that i i saw you've been doing on your twitter because again you said it was invite only is once they say hey i've accepted my invite to the camp you're quote tweeting it and giving them the little writing about like it feels like a college they, like they're getting like a little ju- like oh man i've been invited I- i've been selected to go and do this it seems like uh, the the kids are getting a real uh a big kind of juice out of this thing. Yeah, and I, that's kind of was one of the big goals is especially in today's, you know, today's world of social media and Instagram and Twitter and just, you know, kids are talking to college coaches all the time. There's just it's just such a different football height and recruiting has changed so much in the last five years. And yeah. uh you know I try to do my best on social media and Twitter to retweet and favor people. I you, know, you can't answer everything or, or whatnot. Right. But you know, I think it's uh you know, a cool platform to be able to interact with people. And that was always kind of a big thing for me. Um, you know, nobody thought I was going to be in the NFL I, in the NFL or whatnot. I always thought, hey, when I make it, you know, I want to still be, you know, that same guy that talks to people and just treats it like it's nothing. So, uh, you know, I think it's just a good opportunity opportunity for me to do that. And, uh, you know, the, the kids like it. Sometimes it's weird to me because I don't really, you know, look at me like that sometimes or whatnot. Right. But, uh you know, if I can make someone, you know, happy with a retweet or a favorite or whatnot, why not take a couple seconds out of the day and, and do it, so. Absolutely. So let's get into it. Speaking of the recruiting, let's talk a few Jets topics here. Well, wh- how about the Jets? $21 million, baby. Oh, yeah. And uh, free agency. So let me ask you, was it uh, – was was it what were you looking for i i found it very interesting i will say one comment i pulled because once you picked the jets and did your introductory press conference one thing that stood out to me tyler what you said was that that you were looking and i'm going to paraphrase here but you were looking to play with young guys that you wanted a a youth thing both with zach wilson and kind of just young in general you know most people are like show me the dollar bills baby i want to see the zeros that's my choice or i'm motivated by location i want to go play by a beach why did you say that? And if you can kind of expound upon that choice and also just kind of the free agency in general going in there for the first time of your career. Yeah. Free agency was crazy. It was a, it was a different experience, but uh, you know, for me is I have, you know, a different, an interesting story, I guess. Like it took me a long time to get my opportunity in this league. And uh, you know, the whole time, like I knew what I could do. I know what I could do. I always know, know what I could do. And uh you know, it's just however it works out, people getting paid, draft picks, uh, you know, my chance just didn't, it was just took a little while to come. And, you know, I finally get my chance and I, I play well. And, uh, you know, then people are like, oh, yeah, one year, you did it one year, or, you know, he was all right, or this and that. And it's like, yeah, you know, I get that. But, uh, you know, I just know how much I can do and how much I have, how much, you know, growth I still have in me. And uh, so I knew, you know, the, the money's going to come along with playing good. And, you know, 
at the end of the day, you go and you put your best foot forward, you handle your business the best you can, and the money's going to work out. And I just didn't think you could – I didn't think I could keep getting better as a player if I didn't go somewhere that um, I could grow. And I think uh, everything that they've done here in free agency, I think, you know, like hint on, hint on Zach, you know, being a young – you know, young, very talented quarterback. And, uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit for him in an offense that I'm, you know, pretty comfortable in. It's similar to what I ran in, in Minnesota, but it's probably a little more uh, innovative. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, Coach LaFleur coming from uh, the Niners and, and the way they use their tight ends with, you know, Juice and, and Kittle and whatnot, just, uh, you know, thought offensively it was, it was a great fit. And on top of Zach having uh, – you know, a great arm talent, like he's mobile. And I think that brings so much to – it's a huge dynamic to bring to an offense. And there's a lot of hidden yards in that for, for everybody. Um, you know, getting out of the pocket, creating plays. You know, defense can only – you know, they can only guard you for so long. And, uh, you know, that was all, you know, some, some big things. On top of all the weapons we have here, you know. Um, sure, right, the yeah. Receive, the receiving core is, you know, loaded with Corey Braxton. A lot is uh, – um, you know, you go and draft Garrett, you know, on top of all the, I mean, there's so many receivers, Tariq, just so many players that are just, um, you know, so talented. And uh, on top of that, in the tight end room, you have, you know, they bring in CJ too, who's super talented, who's had a, a heck of a career and then uh, just came off a great year. Uh, you know, you, you draft Ruck in the, in the third round, who, um, you know, is a great dude. We've all been getting to know each other. Good. On top of that, you have, you know, just, you, know, you can name everybody, you know, Kenny, Lawrence Kayser, who yeah, yeah. You know, I think could be phenomenal one day. And, you know, there's a lot of a lot of talent on this team. And then you get to the running backs and the offensive line. It's just, you know, it's a situation you want to be in. And I feel like there's no better place to turn things around than in New York. Tyler, I mean, we're talking about a first world problem here. Again, we're, Tyler Conklin is here on the show. New York Jets tight end, baby, is here. And I'm going to tell you, Tyler, we haven't had one tight end that we felt good about in the last decade. All of a sudden, Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama, Jeremy Rucker. I mean, the room is, and you mentioned the others, Kenny Yaboa, Lawrence Gager. I, I mean, the room is overflowing with talent. So, Tyler, it, it's hard Westco, for us Westco Jet too. fans. Can't for, Westco, can't yes. about Westco. Yeah, we can't, for, we can't forget That's about Westco. Right Getting a nice uh, highlight there Westco. on Twitter earlier today. And uh, Zach Wilson throw. Ooh, sexy. Getting some retweets there. But, Tyler, I mean, how good can this tight end room be, man? I heard what you and Uzama were talking about right off your initial pressers. And, and Jet fans are pinching themselves. They don't know how to feel about they've never had this much talent in the tight end room, maybe ever. Yeah, I think that I think the sky's the limit for this group as tight ends and as just the offense. I mean, sure. Uh, sure. And I think OTAs has been a great, you know, we've all come together, had a lot of team bond, a lot of chemistry. We've all really dove into this offense and, you know, uh, we've really competed all, you know, all OTAs or offseason, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, the sky's really, the, sky, the sky's the limit, but uh, it's got to wait until we get through camp and start playing games. That's true. How's that connection with the old Zach Wilson? Jet fans are begging to know how, how's the chemistry between you two uh, going? Yeah, I think Zach. I mean, I think Zach's chemistry with everybody right now is really well. I mean, he's throwing the ball great. He's accurate. You know, the way he can throw from different arm angles, I think, is really impressive. Uh, I got hit on his mobility already, mm -hmm. and I think he's really uh, just doing a good job of grasping this offense because this offense can be, you know, it's just a can be a lot for and everybody. By the, it's a lot that goes way, into it. I saw you guys are linking up tight end university, both Zach Wilson and Tyler Conklin apparently heading to tight end you. First off, what was the pitch like uh, for, have you been to tight end university before? I know this is going to be the second year. Uh, what was that like? Did uh, Travis or uh, Kittle, did they call you up? Uh, what happened there? How did, how did you find out uh, that you were uh, kind of going there? Yeah. Um, actually George Kittle reached out to me and invited me and, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, I would have loved to go last year, but I get it. You know, you got to wait your turn. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, I talked to CJ a lot about it. I'm pretty sure CJ went last year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm pretty sure he'll be there this year. So, okay. I'm excited. It's going to be, uh, we're going to have three Jets down there. I don't know if the news came out yet, but I'm almost positive yeah. he's going. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it, it'd be a fun experience. I've never been to Nashville. It'd be cool to get out there. So, was it an easy decision they called you up and you're like, a kiddo, I already got my bags packed, baby. Let's go. Yeah, or did you have to think yeah. about it a little? Oh, no, I'm in. I'm all in. I think it's, I mean, you can't pass up an opportunity to go and, first of all, hang out with the guys and have a good time and then sure. go learn from, you know, the best tight ends in the NFL. So, 
Yeah, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity to get tight end university coming up. Another event for you guys. You got training camp. You're supposed to have a nice little vacay, little R and R baby. But uh, you guys getting some extra work in, uh, which is going to be cool. Get Zach Wilson will also be down there as, uh, among the quarterbacks, and uh, Uzama will be heading down there as well. So Tyler, I did this series, and I appreciate the retweet by the way a while back of introducing the new additions to the to the Jets to all the fans so they could learn more about them. I spoke of the Vikings guy. And he told me that you have this nickname over there in Minnesota. I, I need to hear it from you if you like it. Gronklin? I've, I've heard that thrown around there. Are you a fan of that nickname? Do you have your own nickname? Or what, sh- tell us the juicy deets here on the nickname Gronklin that I've been hearing floating around the streets. I don't know. It just randomly popped up in Minnesota. I don't know who created it. I don't know. You know, Some people ran with it. Some people did it. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, a lot of people just call me you know, Conk or TC or okay. Tyler or T-Conk. Uh, I feel like you know, being out here, the Gronklin thing, I don't think it's gonna be able to fly. You know, New England in the division. I just <laughs> you know, I don't see, I don't see Jets fans loving that. So I got a feeling it's not gonna stick, and I'm fine if it doesn't stick. You know, it really doesn't matter to me. I'm pretty easy. Uh, so. Yeah, we'll it feels like a square good. peg round hole, to be honest with you, because people are just always trying to find the next thing, like Baby Gronk, this Gronk, Gronklet. They're trying to do a lot. Again, I I don't think you need the nickname. I, I mean, we got the burly beards. I mean, you're kind of testing I'm about to say, there. I was going to say, your beard, your beard's looking good. Your beard's looking good. Yeah, you give, me, give me the scouting report here. How, how are we comparing here? Am I am I uh, doing a fair I job you, I here? I think you might be a little – I think yours might be a little fuller than mine, a little longer than mine right yeah. now. But, you know, we got time. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah, by the way, what's the product? We're using a special product on that thing you got over there? What, what, what do you do? What's the secret I, I sauce? Haven't, I haven't been because I've been, you know, I've been all this traveling and moving. Of course. But I, got a, I got a couple, you know, whatever the whatever the girlfriend gets me usually. Oh, you know, nice. Whatever. A little beard oil here and there. If I'm a little beard oil here and there. If I'm going out, but okay, uh, wooden brush. You know, you gotta make sure you <laughs> wood, wooden brush. <laughs> that's right. That's key. That's uh, people don't understand that. Uh, no, people don't get that. You know, you gotta brush your beard. Or, Especially if it's long, it'll look crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, that's key. Well, Tyler, I don't know if you talked about this, but uh, obviously you're coming off a career year. I, I mean, boom. I mean, catches, yards, touchdowns. I, I, I mean, you're all over the place. Do you have your own personal uh, goals for next season? And whether it's, uh, I don't know if it's statistical milestones, whether it's a team thing. Do you, do you have like a little list you keep with you of things you're hoping to accomplish in your first year with the Jets? Yeah, I'm, I'm big on goal, on goal setting and, and writing okay. my goals down. Uh, you know, we're going to keep all, all those, you know, mm. private, but you know, there are the goals are getting written down and, uh, you know, I think it's important to write goals. I think there's something to speaking it into existence and, um, you know, manifesting it, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of goals and, you know, only want to go up from here. How long have you been doing that, by the way? The whole uh, writing the goals down. That, that's uh, I've heard other people say. That. I think Elijah Moore maybe last year was the one who said that after he got drafted. Uh, although he did it a weird way. He did like Game of Thrones style. He was writing all the names apparently of all the receivers that were taken ahead of him, and put them on the mirror. But uh, how long have you been doing the goal writing down thing? I've been doing it since I, you know, since I first walked on at, at Central Michigan. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, s- you know, silly goals. Get get to two hundred thirty pounds. Do this. Do that. Um, I was, I was just a little basketball player at one point. But, uh, you know, and actually when I first got in the league, I kind of got away from it for a little while. And then I weirdly wrote them, started writing them again, going into my third year. And it wasn't, look like those, it wasn't looking like those goals were going to get reached. And then, you know, people got banged up and stuff happened. And those goal, the goals I wrote almost got reached exactly. And I was like, you know what, there's something to this. And yeah. uh, so I wrote them again and we were close again. And we're going to write them again and we're going to get there again. So there's something to it. I love that. Tyler, was it hard to be patient? Because if anyone looks at your career, like it took a while for you to be able to have this career year, obviously, that you're coming off of. Great timing, by the way, ahead of free agency. Very nice there. Yeah, the, the money, baby. But uh, like, like, was it hard being that patient, just waiting your turn and saying, hey, it's in God's hands when it's the right time. It's all going to happen. I just got to keep going to work and kind of smacking the grindstone. Yeah, it was super frustrating. Uh you know, rookie year is kind of a whirlwind in, whirlwind in general, but uh, it was definitely frustrating. Especially, I knew what I could do as a as a as a tight end. I knew, you know, I had so much room to grow, and uh, you know, you kind of get labeled as this and as that just by right. not getting an opportunity to do something. And I always told myself I would I would have rather get an opportunity and, and totally mess it up than to just never get an right. opportunity at all. You know, at least I could live with it and be like, hey, you just blew it, instead mm-hmm. of uh, you know just never getting it. And, uh, you know, I used to feel bad, you know, I'd get in my little moods and be, ah, man, I want my opportunity, I got to do this or do that. And, 
eventually I'm like, I just got to stop worrying about it. And I just was like, you know, I'm going to go on scout team and just ball out. And, you know, mm -hmm. they need a receiver. I play receiver on scout. I do whatever I had to do. And, you know, the day I kind of changed my mindset and started thinking like that, things started getting better. And, uh, you know, as opportunities come, came, it just, you know, I've, it worked out how it was supposed to work out. You know, I was prepared for it. If I would have got that opportunity my second year, you know, who knows? I might not have been ready for it. But it yeah. came when, when it was supposed to come, and, and it all worked out how it was supposed to. All right, Tyler, let's get a couple quickies here before we uh, get you out of here. Again, appreciate the time. Again, uh, Tyler Conklin here, New York Jets tight end uh, here uh, joining us uh, on the show. And, uh, Tyler, I have to uh, ask you if – for people that have not seen your game, that have not seen, they're just Jet fans, and all of a sudden, boom, you've dropped from the skies. Who, Tyler Conklin, who's this guy? What is your game? What should Jet fans expect this season and, of course, just really uh, throughout your uh, your career here with the Jets? Yeah, man, I think you get a complete tight end. I think I can, uh, you know, I can I can play well in a run game. I can I can beat man coverage on third down. I can, um, you know, I, I always took pride in wanting to be able to do everything that a tight end is, you know, supposed to be able to do. And uh, I think I'm I'm a, I'm a good route runner that I don't get enough credit for, mm -hmm. but yep. it is what it is. But uh, uh, yeah, I you know I just take pride. I want to be a complete tight end, and uh, you know, I, got, I think we, we're going to have some we're going to have some stuff to show you over the next couple of years. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, we're going to need a little bit more juice on that. The route running of uh, what people on social media throwing a couple of things, oh, couple articles. What's they, happening? No, I think just in general. I just think cause I, I just with being a late bloomer and not getting uh, you know a chance early in my career. I think it just haven't really hasn't been you know it's just not really known that I'm I can run routes. So you're ready to surprise I'm just, some people. I'm just like, excited to surprise people. Yeah, nothing mm. that no one said. Just excited to surprise people, basically. Okay, and uh, that seems like a massive chip on your shoulder. You're ready because again, you kind of had this coming out party last year, but. It seems like to you, that's not the end of the story. There's a lot more to give here. There's a lot more meat on that bone, it seems like. Yeah, I think there's a lot more meat on the bone. And uh, I think there's, uh, you know, I got a lot to prove and throughout the rest of my career, and I'm excited to do that. By the way, Tyler, is there a, you know, I, I watch your game. I see you on tape. Uh, I, I'm trying to get the visual. You know, everyone loves the pro comp. Is there a tight end that you, either in the older days, if you watch tape from way back when or current, that you've been taking things from their game and you kind of see it in your own in some sense? I mean, I've watched so many different tight ends. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year I watched a lot of Jordan Reed because, you know, being with Kirk Cousins wow. and him being with Jordan yeah. for so long. Uh, uh, and it's a similar offense. Uh, so, you know, a lot of tight ends that I've watched just that have played in this offense. I went Daniels, Jordan Reed, uh, Kittle, obviously, watch a lot be in this offense. So, you know, all three phenomenal tight ends, and there's something to learn from all of them because they're all, you know, they're all a little different. So, all right, Tyler, this has been a magical conversation. I could talk to you for 30 years, but uh, we all got <laughs> lives to get to. But, Tyler, before we get you out of here, what is your message to Jet fans? Jet fans that are watching this right now and uh, they're hearing you and maybe for the first time or they're just hearing you in general, what is your message to Jet fans on expectations, not just uh, for you, but what Jet fans uh, should be looking forward to when you're stepping on the football field come this fall? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I heard about when I, when I signed here was just how good the fans were. And I was coming from a place in Minnesota where everybody's like, oh, the fans are amazing. The fans are amazing. The fans of Minnesota are amazing. And uh, that was also the first thing I heard here. And I realized that firsthand pretty quickly that the fans here um, you know, are unbelievable and they're diehards. And, uh, you know, I think everybody here on this team is ex wants to go win games and wants to get to where everybody else wants us to get to. So, um, you know, we just appreciate you guys being there every Sunday cheering us on. And, you know, just know we're going to give everything we got to make this happen. So. Well, we're looking forward to it. We are starving, man. We haven't had the playoffs and the playoffs. Jim, a little Jim Moore there. We haven't had the playoffs since 2010, man. We are starving. We've had one winning season the last 11 years, and I know you guys are like, that's a pass, man. We don't care about any of that garbage deal. We're about to create our own legacy here. But, man, Jet fans are starving for some chutzpah, man, some juice. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you are, and our goal is to give it to you, so. I appreciate that. And uh, one last time, folks, because this is the reason we put this together. Of course, I love talking Jets here with Tyler. But your event, uh, again here, Tyler, the 586 Showcase. Again, eventcreate.com backslash the 586 Showcase. Any uh, final words or anything we missed uh, on your camp, which, of course, is uh, the reason that we uh, kind of came together here for everybody. No, there's three camps. we got youth camp, uh, you know, elite 7th to 10th grade camp. We've got, you know, the big boys, 11th, 12th graders in the 586 Showcase. And, uh you know, if anybody happens to be in Michigan or anything, feel free to stop by. It'd be a good event.
and uh, show your support. Tyler, thank you so much for taking the time, man. We uh, we really appreciate it here, pal. And good luck this season. Go score some touchdowns. Uh, get that burly beard going. Get your girlfriend to get you some more stuff. Let that live. Let it breathe a little, man. And we're looking forward to it, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. There he is. Uh, Tyler.